Hey, welcome to Flying Wheels and my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. Today's a really fun video because I'm gonna try to find out if I can buy a car today and sell it at CarMax for a profit today. So my father and I and my grandfather are gonna travel down to Connecticut from New Hampshire to go buy a Shelby GT500. We haven't seen it yet. We're buying it from another dealer down there. We pre-negotiated the deal. Super nice car from what we hear. We're gonna take a couple hour drive down to Connecticut to see if we can purchase it. From there, we're gonna take it to CarMax, which is right up the road, to see if we can make a profit. Why? Because cars are super expensive right now, especially special interest vehicles. So cross our fingers, we can turn a profit in a day on a really cool car and have a family road trip. I don't know what's gonna happen, but you guys are gonna come along with me. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. So hey, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. I just bought this GT500. Actually, let me strike that, reverse it. My father just bought this GT500. He's been in the market for a GT500 for a long, long time. And he already owns a Ford GT, but he really just wants a toy that he can play around with. His Ford GT has, he's the original owner from 07, 5,000 original miles. He doesn't use it a lot. So he's looking for a GT500 that he can really beat on and have a good time with. So we found this 2010 GT500 with 130,000 miles. It's not a beater, but it's obviously been driven. It's obviously been used. It came from the south, brought its way up to Connecticut, and now he wants a toy that he can just play around with. He has a 45 minute commute back and forth to work each day, so he wants a toy that he can enjoy his ride but not rack up the miles on his collector cars. So this is the car right here. It's a 2010 GT500, 5.4 liter supercharged V8, six speed standard transmission. The car is an animal. We've already taken it for a test drive. You could feel the supercharger whine and the tires just rip loose on, on the hit of the gas. It's 130,000 miles, so I mean, there's wear and tear. There's a little bit right there and a little bit right there. That's oxidation from an aluminum hood. The wheels are in pretty good shape and the body is straight all the way to this point right here. Going around the back side is perfect as well. And the quarter panel all the way to the front has actually been repainted. But if you look at the Carfax, it says minor damage. Minor damage might have been like a scrape down the side. And obviously if they're gonna paint the door, they're gonna blend the front fender and the rear quarter. This is a 550 horsepower, 5.4 liter supercharged V8. This is a crazy monster of a car. Now we really worked the guy as hard as we could. We tried to pre-negotiate a deal over the phone, but he wanted us to come down. So we left a deposit on the car. We came down here and we came to an agreement. Now I have to give it up to these guys because they really worked hard to try to make this deal happen. And we walked in knowing for sure that we're ready to walk away if it doesn't hit our number. And we really wanted to purchase this at $19,000, which I knew was extremely unrealistic on a second gen GT500, but you have to start somewhere. So we started at 19, made it to 20. He still said, no, absolutely not. 24 was his bottom dollar. Now 130,000 mile GT500, that's a ton of money because it's not a collector car anymore, it's just a toy. So I have to keep that in mind. But at 20 to 21 is still a fair price. We ended up paying 21.5 out the door, all taxes, all fees, all expenses. So we own this car for 21.5. So once he's done finishing up all the paperwork, we're going to take it over to CarMax, which is right up the road, for an appraisal and see what they'll offer for us to purchase it from us right after we purchased it. Love the retro style dual color bubbled seats. Shelby logos here. It does have the Microsoft sync, the shaker stereo, the Shelby emblem and the steering wheel, and then the SVT gauges. Now what's cool is when you start up the car, it actually lights up with SVT on the dash and it stays lit the whole time the car's running. Six speed shifter, so upgraded from the five speed, and then GT500 billet aluminum dash. My only concern isn't so much the accident that the Carfax reported, because Carfax did report that it was in a minor accident, and it said specifically minor. My real concern is opening the trunk. So when we open the trunk, you'll see that the padding is kind of warped, almost like as if fabric got wet. And then going into the trunk, why are there rocks in here? And what is the dirt? Like how does dirt actually get in here? You'll notice there's no spare tire because it actually comes with an inflator for weight reduction. But the big spot is in here. Why are there stones and a corkscrew in here? What on earth would be the purpose? I have no explanation as to why there are stones, pebbles, and a corkscrew tucked in way in the quarter panel. Hey, my name is Craig. Hi, Craig. How can I assist you today? 
I have a 2010 uh, Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. I was interested in selling it, and I wanted to see if I can get an appraisal from you guys and what the process was. We can set you up with an appointment, and um, we can bring that vehicle into our location. Uh, I'm actually not too far away, and I have the car with me. I was wondering, would like 30 minutes be okay? 30 minutes from now? Yeah, I can set that appointment up. All right, our appointment is set. Let's go see how we do. Are we gonna make money? I feel like if I'm guessing, I'm gonna say they're gonna offer me around 18 to 19, which is where I originally started. My number is 19 on this car, but we paid 21 and a half, I believe. I think we paid 21 and a half, finished out the door, all fees. Now I say all fees because they had dealer fees because they wouldn't wholesale it to my dealership. So we had to purchase it as a retail customer. So purchasing it a retail customer, selling it as a retail customer, my guess is gonna be 18 to 19 grand. Let's see how we do it. So today you bought a GT500 and I bought a CTSV Coupe, both over 500 horsepower. Actually, mine has 554, yours is 550. Now, when do we get to race? We'll race again. Remember the last time I beat you with my Z06 against your Mercedes? <laughs> Did you beat me? I beat you once, you beat me three times. Okay, okay that sounds more like it. We'll do it again at New England Dragway. You know, it's funny seeing the difference between retail and wholesale because we drove two and a half hours each way, so five hours of driving, an hour with the sales guy, an hour with the finance guy to get this thing. And then I bought a car in literally five minutes and had it paid for and set up shipping for the same price, wholesale. And so that's the two differences. Mine is streamlined, retail is an entire day process. And all I did was click complete and it was paid for. Yours was at least 12 pages. First thing the guy said when he told us he has a $695 dealer fee is that it includes a 30-day warranty. Right. And as soon as we got to the paperwork, the first thing they had you sign was an as-is buyer's guide disclosure that says it voids all implied warranties, right. which he specifically said the 30-day was an implied warranty. You want to know why GT500s are always crashing? Don't crash it. Wheels spun at 70 miles an hour. All right, so let's do it this way. I already have a number that I've said that they're gonna offer you. What do you think the offer is gonna be? What do I think it's yeah. going to be? What do you think CarMax is gonna offer you for this car? That we just bought. That we just bought 20 minutes ago. I think they're going to offer me 17.5. Well, you're actually lower than I am. Okay. I said 18 to 19. 19 is what we wanted to pay for this. We paid 21 and a half. Yep. I think they're gonna be at 19. Okay, well you're better than me. I they. So that their would number be would be actually my original number, yep. and, and you think it's going to be even less than and that. And that is what we wanted to pay. We paid more. I think they're going to offer us 17.5 to start, and they'll go up to 18.5. And they'll go five. up. I wonder. It must be negotiable. And they do a trade-in, or they just do an appraisal to buy it outright, because they like to have their inventory, whether you're buying from them or not. So we could oh just God. sell it to them. Okay, we're the pictures of the car, pretty much, and I just send it over to our purchasing department. Oh, is that easy? Yeah. So, okay. Do you guys need to put it on a lift or anything? No, we don't do any lift. If, you know. Drive it? Nope. It's that uh, easy. The okay. only time I drive it is if you decided you wanted to sell the car. Okay, so, so uh, after. Yeah, so just with all the COVID regulations going on and everything, we do our best to stay out of the car as much as possible. Right. Makes sense. Um, so what happens is, is, I'm assuming this is the one we're appraising today, right? Yes, please. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so how it'll work is I'll have somebody <clears throat> pull it into the garage area. Okay. Uh, usually we'd answer a couple questions before you go, you know, before I go take out my pictures. Uh, so just to save us some time, I'll have someone pull it in the garage area. Uh, we'll meet inside, I'll answer a couple questions. Um, and then from there, I take, you know, I pretty much start at the outside of the vehicle, just work my way around, take pictures of the undercarriage, scan in the VIN number, send it over to our buyers. If I, you know, if I, you know, any like smoke smells or anything like that, sure. um, I'd notate and put that inside our notes there. Um, they'll go ahead and make an offer on it. If you decided you wanted to sell it, you have seven days to act on it. Um, from that point, uh, I would disinfect the car, test drive it, just to confirm the odometer is working and it's driving the way it should. Um, and then we cut you a check for the full amount, or if you owe anything on it, we take out the difference, and depending on positive or negative equity, you know, you if, for the check. If I decide, if I like the offer, can I sell it to you today and leave yeah, it? Yeah, Do you have the title, or is it something Oh, I just finance? have to get you the title, I guess. It's finance. It's finance? Yeah. Okay, so what we would do is we just give a call over to your finance company, uh, take what we offer, subtract it from what you owe. If you owe, if you're positive, 
We cut you a check for the, the remaining balance same day. Okay. How long That's does great. the process take to get a, an offer? An, um, on this, this is probably going to take a little bit longer. Uh, we want to make sure we're putting the right amount on there for you. Yep. You know, normally, you know, the, the more common cars like a Honda Accord, right. Toyota Camry, stuff like that. Um, you're going to see an offer in about 15 or 20 minutes. So this will probably be about 25, 30 minutes. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. So what they said is just bring it into the service department and they're going to ask some questions. Yeah. You can tell them we're a wholesaler. You know, we bought it and we're just curious to see what they'd offer us for it because they buy from dealers all the time. Well, they do, yeah. Yeah, so there's no reason to say otherwise. We can just tell them we bought it, curious to see what it's worth to you guys, and, and that's it. So that backfired a little bit. They don't want to appraise it because it had a dealer plate on it. Even though it's registered, they don't appraise or purchase cars from other dealers, unfortunately. So it's actually a pretty quick process. We were yeah. 25 minutes start to finish probably. Right. So I have to give it to them for efficiency. Yeah. And now they email us the offer. Like I said, they won't buy it from another dealer. So because we had our plates on it, they refused to appraise it. But we bought it in Connecticut today and they also gave us a temporary plate. So once we put on the temporary plate, they allowed themselves to do an appraisal for us. And now they email it to us and we wait. I'm curious to see. And the other thing is, it's good at all CarMaxes. So we're in Connecticut, but there's a CarMax in New Hampshire near us, so we can actually sell it to that CarMax in New Hampshire as well. So just to recap, CarMax versus like trading in to other dealers, Ford dealers, new car stores, even places like me, like I, I am right now giving top dollar for trade-ins. You just traded in your Ram. Want to explain? Ram 2500 with Cummins Diesel, 9,000 miles. Bought it for 53,000. I traded it into Ford for 59,000. A year later. Yeah, it had, I had it about eight months. Um, but before I did that, I did contact CarMax. They offered me 43,000. So CarMax was what, four, fifteen thousand dollars less on their offer to your brand yes. new eight-month-old truck. Yes. And I basically had to give them my life story online, so they had all my information. All right, they enter all your info on the computer first, and then yeah. they lowball you. Yeah. Well, we put an answer to the question, can you buy a car and sell it at CarMax? Technically, no. It has to be titled in your name. They will not buy from dealers. So if your car is registered to you, you can take it to CarMax to sell. I was trying to reassign it from my dealership to the CarMax dealership. They were not having it. They will not buy a car wholesale from another dealer, even if I'm willing to give them a good deal. He wouldn't even give me a price. As soon as he saw the dealer plates, eh, no way. They were not interested, but he did take a look at it and he had a number but he wouldn't release it to me so I don't even know so me I cannot you you get a title in your own name they won't do it it doesn't happen so that's the answer to our question today was a fail but not really because my father wanted that GT500 I just wanted to answer a question he's keeping that car he's going to enjoy it my name is Craig from Flying Wheels make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and if it was at all interesting do me a favor and hit the thumbs up down below as well as, well as the bell that gives you notifications every time I make a new video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. Adios.